group, so I think we have time to play a short game. So, Cheetah Girls Roar! Cheetah Girls Roar! This is a time in everything, in politics, in medicine, in the sports, in um, literally Everything that happens in our society right now is so much about girls leading the way and girls being the future. And um, I think that it's important for us to make sure that we're instilling that in our young girls. Um, I, I know for my generation, a lot of us, it probably took place more or less in college or later on. And I think knowing that earlier on, you can go so much further and that's what Girls on the Run is here to do, make sure that girls tap into their limitless potential. And I'm excited to be on this train. And yeah, girl power. <laughs>Girls on the Run is a program for girls in third through eighth grade, and we are all about teaching girls competence and self-esteem to show them empowerment and that they can do anything at this critical time in their life. We weave running and physical activity into the program, um, but really focus on the holistic health of girls, have some fun while they're learning great life skills and confidence building techniques as they grow up. We serve schools and community sites in four counties of Metro Atlanta, Cobb, Fulton, DeKalb, and Gwinnett. During the school year, our program is twice per year, fall and spring, and the girls are meeting twice per week after school. And we are just launching our summer camp program for the first time, um, so now we'll be having our program in the summer, which we're really excited about. And I know Kamaya was really nervous, and I think you really helped her, and so, I really, it's like, it's like a double compliment. Like I think that you, yeah, I think you both helped each other. So thank you so much for helping a friend. That's really great. Camp has been so much fun. This is our first summer doing camp. Um, and the girls have been working on what it takes to make a friend and to be a friend. And so they've been going through all sorts of different things. They talked about the qualities that they all have as a friend, and then also what they're looking for in a friend. And so naming those qualities and talking about them, but then also being really silly about it. So they are doing, they're playing duck, duck, goose, but instead of saying duck and goose, they're saying silly because they want their friends to be silly. Um, and so they're really identifying how to reach out, make friends, um, and be good friends to each other. We talked a little bit more about conflict. So what happens when something happens with your friend that doesn't go that well? How do you express your feelings? Um, so we practiced our I feel statements um, and different scenarios, but we always, in Girls on the Run, want to get moving while we're doing it. So we do silly circuses and we run around um, and we write things on our arms um, to remind us of these lessons. So everything that we do is really interactive and engaging and appropriate for the age level of our girls. The first year of Girls on the Run was fun. I did it here during school and then this, the second year I did it here again at school. We have a lot of things to do with each other and every day we get to learn something new about a friend and I really want to learn about other people. It's really fun but we don't get to run, wait we do get to run and do activities, we get to do art activities.
we have campers who have never participated in Girls on the Run. Maybe it's not at their school or they have other activities going on. Um, or we have girls who just love Girls on the Run and this is a great opportunity to continue their participation throughout the school year. And we also have incoming third graders who have never had an opportunity to participate. So it's kind of their intro into what we're all about. And then maybe they'll be interested in participating during the school year. The girls have so much personality, so much potential. Um, the curriculum is actually interesting because it's on their level, but they also, it, they learn things. They learn how to work in a team. They learn how to manage conflict. They learn how to play games and actually learn what it means to be a friend. Um, it's, it's been interesting to see little girls work together like many adults in um, different scenarios and also actually be active. Uh, we had the girls um, doing lunges when they were thinking about how they wanted to be friends or what kind of questions they wanted to ask their friends or if they've ever done anything that a friend has done, they would do lunges to a spot where the other friend was. So it was, it's actually really cool. We have a third through fifth grade program called Girls on the Run, and we have a sixth through eighth grade program called Heart and Soul. Um, we are mostly in schools after school, but we can really be anywhere. We can be in places of worship, we can be in boys and girls clubs, different community centers, even a homeschool team. Um, we want to be where the girls are and where we can be accessible to everybody. Um, we want to be fun, we want to be healthy, and we want um, our girls to just feel really connected to each other and to their coaches. Um, so we have small team experiences. We keep our team small so that girls can really join tight bonds together and talk about the things that really matter to them. Um, and we want to have tight relationships with coaches too. We have limits on how many coaches can be on each team. Some teams have more coaches than can be on the team because we want them to develop those tight relationships with, um, with the girls. We also have teams that really, really need coaches. Um, and so we seek volunteers from the community for our teams. So we have some of our coaches are teachers, that's a lot of them. Some of them are parents or guardians of girls. Um, we have some aunts, we have some grandmas. Um, and then some of them are also community volunteers who reach out to us, who've heard about our program um, and want to be connected. And actually, a good number of our community volunteers are now Girls on the Run alumni. Um, and they were in the program and now they are teaching the program, which we love. We also have an end of season 5K. So at the end of each after school session, the girls are empowered to finish and accomplish this huge goal of running a 5K. A lot of things are changing for girls at that age. I mean, it is, if any of us can remember, it, it's a crucial time where you are really discovering who you are and how you interact with friends and you get to start making some decisions at that time decisions about who your friends are and some decisions about how how you're going to interact in the world and i think that we really want to support these girls at that time where they're making those decisions and those changes and choices I used to teach in Asheville. I worked in the school system and Girls on the Run was an after school program at the school where I worked and I loved it. I loved seeing the girls there. And so when I moved to Atlanta, um, I looked on the website and applied. Um, I am a person who sports has been a huge, um, huge deal in my life. When I was the age of a Girls on the Run girl, um, I was struggling with a lot of things. I was a dyslexic kid and sports is really what made me feel confident um, and so I've been really passionate about that all um, ever since. I have always coached, I've worked at camps and I love the way that um, Girls on the Run combines social emotional learning with running. We um, intentionally start at third grade. Um, developmentally, girls are sort of exploring their independence, but they are still taking the advice of adults. So it's very intentional that we start. Um, some of the girls who are younger, maybe they're not experiencing peer pressure, and that might be a concept that's new to them. But as we get into fourth and fifth grade, they're seeing more of that. And those peer relationships with girls are just, um, they can be wonderful and they can be crushing as well as girls sort of create their identity 
Um, and then when you hit that pre-puberty and puberty range, there's a lot of comparing ourselves to others and I'm not good enough, um, or of course social media plays a huge role in that um, for girls and comparing themselves to others and striving for perfection, which doesn't really exist. And when you're, when you're trying to create that identity for yourself, um, it's confusing. It's a really confusing time. I have been a Girls on the Run coach with Heart and Soul, our middle school program, for seven years or 14 seasons. The Heart and Soul practices are great. We meet for an hour and a half after school twice a week. And we start with the girl's favorite, snack. And what's great is that our snacks are often donated to us and so that takes away a girl not having any snack. So we start with snack and we have a big idea for the day. And some of the big ideas are that we need a system of strength and supports. Some are that setting boundaries is difficult, but it's important. And so we have an idea and we sort of bring it up and then we give the girls an activity or a game or a challenge that puts that idea into a real life context. The really big difference between the elementary school program and the middle school program is the middle school program is derived around the idea of getting the girls input. So after an activity, I might say, what did you notice about that? And help the girls sort of guide themselves from the idea of the activity and to how that translates into their real lives. I've really been so excited to welcome girls into middle school where everything is different and everything's a little scary and create a space for them to make friends and to learn how to make friends and how to speak up for themselves and build a community and become a runner along the way if that's where she's headed. Middle school is scary because not only in elementary school do you hear a lot of stories about what middle school is like, but all of a sudden you have classes that change every hour. And in Gwinnett, we have usually three elementary schools that join into one middle school. And so you've gone from that safety of knowing everybody to, I don't know these girls, I don't know the people on my bus, I don't know the teachers. And Heart and Soul, our middle school program, really focuses on the whole girl on brain, body, spirit, social, heart, on this connection of being a girl in middle school. And we bring them in and talk about how we learn about ourselves and how we learn about the friends we wanna make and how we navigate situations that are uncomfortable or difficult in middle school. And you automatically, the girls always say that at the end of a season, they have 14 new friends who they can count on, who they can see in the hallway. And they have a community within the school that really stands out. Our season is 12 weeks long. And at the beginning of the season, the first few weeks of the season, the girls are really learning about themselves. So being comfortable in the skin that they're in, beauty is on the inside, negative self-talk is a huge lesson that girls need to hear, being you know, po positive self-talk. Um, and so the first part of the season, we're focusing on self and building self-confidence. The second part of the season is really about being a good friend and a good team member. And so we do a lot of lessons about defining what it means to be a friend and what we like to see in a friend. So that's when we get into the mean girls and the peer pressure and the gossip and all of those things, that noise that girls are hearing at this age. So girls learn how to you know, respond in a healthy way and also how to give care to their new friends on the team. And then the final part of the season is all about community. So now I have the self pillar and the friend pillar. And now let's define what the community looks like for our team and the girls create and implement a community service project. All the while, all of the lessons involve running. So we got to run a 5K at the end of the season, right? So um, we build our endurance by running more and more laps or more time throughout the season, but each lap will have a theme that's tied to the lesson. So if we're learning about gratitude, maybe there's some, a statement that the girls read before they run a lap and then they practice the statement to the coach after the lap. Or again, you know, the relay and tag, a lot of games involving cooperation and friendship. So every physical activity is tied to those character development lessons. And then the 5K is very much part of the program. It's part of the curriculum. It is a huge goal. And accomplishing that goal is something that we can take 
with us later in life. I set a goal, I worked hard, I learned by doing hard things, and this challenge has really um, helped me believe that I can do anything. And that's really what we want the girls to capture at the end of the season is, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. We've been talking about it for 12 weeks and then we finally accomplished it. And I can tell you, you cannot have a dry eye at the finish line of the 5K. The girls are really impressed with themselves, impressed with their teammates, um, and it's really moving when they accomplish the goal. It's amazing. We have so many girls who maybe come to us really shy and quiet. And by the end of this season, they're one of our leaders in speaking out and leading activity. We have girls who return for a second and third season and naturally almost start to be our go-to and to be a leader and not only in their school and the team, but then in the hallways as well and in the classroom. And we also have girls who come in maybe lacking some of that self-confidence, even if they appear to be loud and boisterous on the outside. When you sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, you find out there's a lot of things they think they can't do. And by the end of the season, when every girl has completed a 5K, completed 3.1 miles, they have such belief in their own power. And so girls will say, I never thought I could do this. I, I didn't think I could do a 5K. And then they have and they know that after that, anything that sets, it comes in front of them could be a challenge rather than an obstacle. Personally, I'm a huge runner and athlete, and I remember when I was in about fifth grade and the confidence is, is waning, and I, I was on the swim team, and that really gave me um, a team that gave me friends that helped me set goals. It was discipline, um, and it really helped me go through that time in my life and I wanted to give that that energy, that positivity back. And so this role is a great combination of my career experience and also my personal passion. The word is out, girl power is a movement right now and girls really need these confidence building skills. And we've seen, thankfully, the trajectory of participation from girls and participation from coaches um, to grow the program. We also have grown our donations, so in order to make the program accessible to all girls in all communities, we do rely a lot on foundation support, individual donations, come run the 5K with us. Um, it's all raising funds for our financial assistance to provide girls with an opportunity to participate. We are so excited to be celebrating our 20th year um, in 2020. In 2000, um, a, a woman who was actually on the soccer team of our founder in Charlotte, North Carolina, founded Girls on the Run of Atlanta. So we are part of a national program and we are now in all 50 states, which is really exciting. Um, but here in Atlanta, we were founded in 2000 and from the get-go, we were extremely intentional about being accessible to all girls. So we were in a, a school in a wealthy area, we were in a school in a low-income area, and we we're also in a YMCA, in a community site. And so let's try these different models and see what works. Um, 30 girls that first season, and now we've grown to serve more than 28,000 girls in our 20-year history. So I will say over our history, um, that model of being accessible to girls has just been critical for us. And we love having girls from all types of neighborhoods, all types of schools participate in our program. The 5K is just a beautiful experience where um, girls from different communities would never participate um, with each other in anything like it before. And then they realize that they're part of something much bigger. So 
We've grown so much with participation, but also community support, and, uh, and that's really wonderful. With girls who are receiving financial assistance a few years ago, we began providing all girls with a pair of running shoes um, because we want them to be comfortable when they're running and, and safe when they're running. We also started providing running bras to girls who needing th needed them. We don't want girls to be embarrassed or feel discomfort when they're running because we want this to be a passion that they have as they get older. So we're really looking at what is a barrier to participation and let's address that barrier. And so I've been really proud of um, how we've grown and focused on some of those items so all girls can participate. Volunteers are truly the heart of our program. They bring our curricula to life. They facilitate all of the conversations and all of the lessons with the girls. Um, so we call them coaches, um, but they're really mentors for the girls. So every team of 15 girls has at least three volunteer coaches. And our coaches are made up of parents, guardians, family members, school staff, teachers, counselors, and community members. Uh, last season alone, we had 586 coaches. Um, and today we have six camp counselors, including some junior coaches who are in high school. So it's a wonderful opportunity to give back, have a ton of fun, and mentor the girls. And we're always recruiting more. So um, it's a great opportunity to get involved in the program. It's great to be part of my community. Um, through Girls on the Run, I've been able to really, you know, get deeper into the Atlanta, different places in Atlanta. We are all in Cobb, DeKalb, Fulton, and Gwinnett. We're in APS schools. Um, and so I think that a lot of volunteers find it, it's a great way to connect to their neighborhood, to people around them. Um, and I think that also, um, it's a great way to support girls and believe in girls and build confidence in girls. I mean, we are building confidence in girls across our entire city. It's pretty exciting thinking about how many girls there are that we're impacting and how many of them we're teaching how to stand up for themselves um, and how to value themselves. We, one of our first lessons is positive self-talk and girls have to really work to think about things to say that they value about themselves. And I think that's so powerful. Volunteering to be a coach is a big commitment. And so if you have the time and the passion for three hours a week, I've never had a coach regret being part of our team. But that's a lot of time. And if you don't have time for that, you can volunteer to help at the office. You can volunteer at our 5Ks. And our 5Ks are great because it's one awesome long day but you get to see the end of all these girls smiling and getting medals and running with their parents. And it's just a super powerful moment. Or if that's still a lot, there are other ways to get involved and to help donate for the teams and be a part of it. And a lot of people ask me, well, I wanna be a coach, but I don't really run. And you don't have to be a runner to be a Girls on the Run coach. Our coaches are just positive, strong adults, male or female, who want to help girls reach their limitless potential. And you don't have to be a runner. You can walk, you can skip, you can jump. As long as you're willing to spend some time and energy investing in young people, young girls, you can be a Girls on the Run coach. So what I need you to do is we're gonna stand up and please make a line for me facing me, shoulder to shoulder line. So perfect, just like this. I really think that if you are looking for a way to volunteer and you haven't found your niche yet, Girls on the Run is a program that, that after the first season seven years ago, I can't imagine not being a coach for this program. And so if you're looking for a way to get involved, look at your kid's school or look online at girlsontherunatlanta.org and they can tell you what schools we're in, they can help you start a site, they can help you be a community volunteer, and they can help you find an easy way to get involved. If you have a third through eighth grade girl 
in your life. Um, we are all about starting new teams at schools and community sites, and so you can reach out to us, um, or there might already be a program at her school. So registration for the fall season is typically in August, and the 5K is in November, and registration for the spring season is in December, January, and the 5K is in April. And if you're a teacher, counselor who wants this program at your school, be that champion, give us a call and help us get started in the school. If you wanna volunteer, um, oh my goodness, we love coach volunteers. You don't have to be a runner to be a Girls on the Run coach. We have a lot of girls who have never run before either and you can go on that journey together. Um, so a lot of coaches come to us really just wanting to mentor the girls. Um, we have college students, we have professionals, we have parents, teachers, um, really want to make it easy to volunteer with us. We do a short training about how to work with this age group and how to facilitate the curriculum and send you on your way. And then we also uh, rely heavily on volunteers to come in our office and prep the materials for each season. And of course, the 5K is a huge volunteer opportunity. And all of these are listed on our website, which is girlsontherunatlanta.org, or you're welcome to call our office. Or again, if you see us at your school, come say hi. Um, those coaches love to talk about the program and expanding the program. Our curriculum really spells out everything that you need to do. Um, so we have all the activities you could literally read from the curriculum. We don't recommend that you do, but you could, um, right? You could read from the curriculum. We have all of your supplies um, together. So if you need cones, you have cones. In a lesson, we even have a tube of toothpaste. So there's gonna be a tube of toothpaste ready for you. Um, and so I think that that takes away some of the intimidation if that's your first time really leading a group. And then we always have coaches working with someone else. Um, and so you'll have someone else there with you um, who will be your teammate and who will help you uh, lead this fabulous group of girls. Thanks for watching. Go to aibtv.com forward slash donate to support programming like this. Your contributions may be tax deductible.